Hello everybody, my name is Anthem, welcome back to Suzerian, let us continue on from where we last left off. So, 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 we got a finalization of the drafted constitutional changes, which seems like th this could be a landmark for, uh, for our country. I was walking to my office, and today was the day to edit and make the final change to the proposal to change the constitution of Swordland. The reform committee had finally bore tangible results, and the draft of the changes were about to be presented to me. I was walking in the marble corridors of the palace, thinking about the huge decision I was going to take. At the entrance of my office, my secretary, Leva, greeted me. Good morning, Mr. President. H how, how are you today, Leva? I'm fine, thank you. More importantly, how are you, sir? Don't, okay. You know what? You know what? I'm perfectly fine. Good to hear. She paused before taking my coat. It looked like she had something on her mind. Mr. Rain, uh, can you give me a hint about your reform plans? If you ask me, taking away the justice immunity is long overdue, but it might anger a lot of people in these halls. Uh, don't, don't say, uh. I'll take it into consideration. I hope you'll keep me informed. I'll take your coat now. Levia left uh, to hang up my coat. I entered my office and sat down. Not long after, Peter, Lucy, and Nia arrived. Greetings. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning. Time to finally get this proposal going. Peter placed a draft in front of me. After your modifications, we'll start the process. Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's just start. Okay. President of the Vetoes. According to Article 77 and 82, the President may veto a bill by returning it to the Assembly with a written statement. The article does not contain any information on how to override a veto. Uh, veto. As a consequence, the President has absolute veto power that cannot be overridden by the Jan Grand National Assembly under any circumstances. You know what? I think if we limit vetoes to a three-fifths majority, that seems... Uh, three-fifths majority can override. We'll, li we'll limit our uh, veto. According to Article 5 of the Constitution, an amendment may be proposed by any member of the Assembly with at least 150 signatures. A two-thirds majority vote in the Grand National Assembly and a simple majority vote in the Supreme Court is required for an amendment. As a consequence, the Supreme Court, which is not part of the elected legislative branch, has enormous power in the amendment process. I only have one option here, so we'll remove the Supreme Court's vote. In the impeachment process. According to Article 17, the President of Sorland is not responsible for the action formed in the exercise of presidential duties, except in the case of high treason or vo violation of the Constitution. In such cases, the President may be impeached by the Supreme Court in a joint session with an absolute majority of its members. Therefore, the impeachment process only includes the Supreme Court, and it gives them great power over the executive. You know what? The Assembly and the Supreme Court can impeach me. Two-thirds majority in both seats. In both houses. According to the Constitution, the President appoints the Ministers of the Council of Ministers from elected members of the Assembly. This requires no confidence vote from the Grand National Assembly. I don't know if we really need to change this. Um... President may nominate uh, ministers, which require for... I mean, this is kind of what I think they do it in the United States. I think they do it like this. I think Canada, there, there's no requirement for who you can choose. You know what? We'll do a confidence vote. Going to Article 50, a political party needs at least 10% of the national distributed vote to win seats in the Grand National Assembly. The votes of the parties are, who patch the threshold are redistributed proportionally, meaning USP, which currently holds a leave, would be the main benefactory. You know, let's increase it to 8%. According to Article 18 and 51, the President is able to issue a decree on political, social, and economic issues that would carry the force of law. They could not contradict the Constitution and are subject to judicial review. Therefore, the President may issue decrees in many subjects while going through the Grand National Assembly. However, the Assembly may pass legislation on the same subjects to override presidential decrees. President may be able to issue decrees of care force of law. Well, decrees require the enabling act. So, and, you know, kind of, if there's, a, if there's a big crisis in the country, then we can do something. According to the Constitution, the president may be elected to four years. However, there is no mention of a term limit, allowing one individual to be able to run, be elected, and serve a president without limits. Two terms, again, that's kind of more like what they do in the United States. Uh, most countries don't have term limits. I mean, Canada doesn't have a term limit, so I don't think we really need one. You know, if I want to keep getting elected, as long as people vote for me, I think that's kind of okay. 
Uh, the Constitutional gives justice Supreme Court total immunity and describes no procedure for, of impeachment, making them untouchable for other branches of the government. That seems like it could be a recipe for disaster. Article 99 of the Constitution defines the Member of Honor title. Its appointment procedures as well as the rights as members may exercise. A Member of Honor has absolute immunity and is considered to be a permanent member of the Grand National Assembly. They are given control of their own personal security team, provided the state's presidential guards. A Member is also eligible to live in a special private residence provided by the state for free. The only person that holds the title is Tarkin Soul. I mean, why have it? If only one person has it, just abolish the title. You know what? No, 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 no. Every peasant's member gets, um... It's an honorary member. Abolish immunity for honored members. They don't need... You know what? Abolish absolute immunity for honorary members. I kind of actually would probably do both, but let's ab abolish absolute... Ah, but... You know, okay, here's the thing. If we do this... The conservative members of our party are going to hate us, because Tark and Soul will then be able to be, you know, arrested and tried for crimes. We can just abolish the title immediately, like, entirely. Or make everybody the title. Or, you know, everybody's basically immune. Well, so, you know what, let's just abolish it. I made the final change proposal and I showed it to my team. They read the changes and discuss it amongst themselves. Lucian spoke afterwards. Looks like the amendment to rape proposed, but I have to say this too. The new electoral threshold is really difficult for the party to accept. Our guys are not fine with the idea. That's true, it would be tough to get all their support, but some of our members might openly try to fight against this. I'll make sure the party follows me. We'll do all the best to make it work, sir. Any other comments before we uh, proceed? I would like to say I do not agree with the new law that gives the Assembly the power to impeach a Justice of the Supreme Court. I am also against the Chief Justice and his obstructionist behavior, but even if we get rid of all of them, the new judges will have less independence with this law. They will be scared to go against the administration when it's needed. They need their protection to do their job, otherwise the new ones will just be pawns just like Sol's old guards. But it's more important that we get rid of the old guards, Mrs. Morgna. After the obstacles are gone, we can strive to make it better. However, he turns to me. You have to be careful, Anton. Make sure you'll be... I'm sure you'll be fine. But once all this happening is out there, we need to prepare against these threats one way or another. The Constitution is not a change that we're prepared in the meantime. I think we can proceed now. We'll be working on the wording proposal with our legal experts before we propose it. In the meantime, you must introduce a proposal to our party, sir. You need a strong speech to get them behind you, but I advise you talk... F but first, I advise you talk to leaders of both the conservative and reformist wings of the party. As far as I'm aware, Mr. Calvin supports reforms already. Mr. Tory will be, a, will be the real problem. Miss Tory will be the real problem. She became a real heavyweight after we left with the executive. Any advice for the speech? Sir, you're pretty well versed in speeches. You know the party. Just make sure you get them hyped up about the reforms. And don't show any weakness. You must also be prepared to reconsider the proposal. Don't show any weakness. You must also be prepared to uh, reconsider the proposal if it comes to that. Thank you for the advice. Wish you good luck with the party, sir. I think we can end this meeting here. We all shook hands and left the room. We got something in Latvian. We got some news. Prepare underway for the final, the annual Benfi Festival. And we're leading promised reforms. Yeah, let's have dinner with business council members. We are lacking to work with the business council to assess weaknesses in the economy. Simon organized a dinner with the affluent economic figure heads of Sorland. When we arrived, the streets were bustling with activity, even though the atmosphere in the country was tense. Lack of ears didn't seem very worried. Together with Walter Tusk, Edith Agnot, Michael Avon and Simon Hall, we entered the renowned Asteria restaurant by the coast. A short blonde man who embodied, who embroidered pocket red manager greeted us and waved his arms in excitement as he told us how pleased he was to have us in his establishment. Beaming with pride, uh, he led us to a private room where we got uh, seated at a large table covered in the occasion with a maroon tablecloth. We were quickly served by a group of servers. Walter spoke as they started taking our orders. I recommend the Lackfiend Salmon President. You have to taste the local else here, the best in Sorland. I'm not gonna order bean stew, are you good? You know, I, I really like salmon. You know what? So I'm gonna order some. I ordered the Lackfiend Salmon for the main course, servers took their notes and asked about the second dish. You know, I'm gonna get some rice as well. Server so placed the glass in front of each of us and served us bread and water. After they were done taking orders, they quickly left alone in the private room. You are the chairman of CBS, which is the central bank of Sorland, not the uh, the news company. 
Mr. President, I don't have any possibility to thank you for coming today. Your presence means a great deal. Indeed, sir, it's an honor to dine with you. You are your chairman, your co-chairman of the National Business Council of Swordland. So yeah, you're, you're important people. You know, it's great to be here with the members of the Business Council. We should thank Simon for organizing this meeting. Oh, no need for that. I hope everybody enjoys the meeting. Someone gestured at the expensive looking uh, red wine bottle. You're, you're my economic minister, right? Yes. Uh, that one of service I just brought to the table. Mr. President? Yes? Do you want some, sir? It's a Chateau Floy from 1934. Yeah, let's try it. Someone poured out some wine in the glass and waited for me to taste before filling it up. I took a sip. It was bitter. Honestly, it tastes like any other wine. How was it? Is it a taste you're liking? I'm not going to say that because I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. It tastes like heaven. See? Simon filled up my glass. After filling everybody's glass, Simon stood up and raised his glass. I've read glass like 15,000 times already. I'd like to raise a toast to all of you here today. We're meeting here tonight in difficult times, but I believe that with hard work, cooperation, and trust, we'll all get through this period as well. I'd like to thank Mr. Rain again for decisiveness when it comes to our economic policies. I'm sure we will stop the recession. I'd also like to thank Mr. Tusk for being here with us today. His presence is an honor. And of course, my colleagues from the Business Council, Mrs. Agnot and Mr. Avon. Without you, none of these would have been possible. Let us drink to future cooperation and growth for a prosperous Soarland. Everybody raises a glass and toasts each other. After a couple of minutes, the servers arrive with our meals. The food tasted amazing. Walter is right. This place must have been the best place in all of Latvian. So, how did you find the food best in the best dining uh, restaurant in Latvian, Mr. President? Fine food is like fine art, but this particular one is a masterpiece. I know exactly what you mean. Art is something else, and embodies so much about us in the world surrounding our lives. The food can't... There is an art of anything. The art of making money, food, wine, and love. Walter, don't... S s stop talking. <laughs> how, are you how are things going in the Rune Palace? The pressure must have increased since after you attended the funeral. It's tough, but our work on the new constitution continues. We all hope so. As we converse with Mikael, and Walter raises his voice in apparent argument with Edith and Simon, we both stop to listen. Arcasia knows the right way of doing business. Their approach to the world is real and raw. I prefer that cutthroat approach in comparison to the niceties. Well, I mean, it's not my country to visit, too. I've been traveling there often on business trips. Their attitude on all countries are nice to visit if you have the cash. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to listen into the conversation. It certainly depends on what you're looking for. Cultural tourism doesn't require a fancy hotel. Last time I went somewhere for that sort of thing, it was university. And even then, we had our wild times thanks to Kornas connected entourage. Also, Walter's uh, taking us down the rabbit hole again. By the way, I thought the construction of the railway was already started. I have had my concerns about the company, but I hope they do a good job. That project will certainly boost our economy if done correctly. The mood has already become positive. I have to congratulate Mr. Rain for starting such a massive project. Thank you for your support, Mr. Avon, of course. Mr. Hole, also deserves credit, of course. Our great economy minister. Is there a joke coming? Why? I thought you said you are great at the economy. He laughed. I heard you brought, uh, bought a new villa, Simon. I don't comment on rumors, but I'll make an exception since we are among friends. It's true. Where's the property? It's a small seaside villa outside on the outskirts of Kranat. It's just a modest house with a swimming pool and a small golf course. Oh, it's just modest. It's just got a, it's just got a golf course in it. So you're becoming oh we went there yes yeah. so you're becoming a ma uh so you're becoming a neighbor of Marcel Cronati not really this place is very remote. Conrad has a way of pulling certain people in it seems. Edith who is sitting on my left she only put her hand over my arm for a few seconds. Come on let's not talk about finance or politics now. We came here to relax. She turned to Simon and Walter. Isn't that right, gentlemen? They nodded at her and took a sip from their drinks. She slightly leaned towards me. So Mr. Rain, why don't you tell us what was behind that strong character of yours? I heard that you had just bought. Uh, you were uh, brought up in the capital and experienced all the power shifts as it happened. Is that right? It must have been tough. It was a difficult time in the capital, but I've learned a lot about politics. It all makes sense now. I never met your fam family, Mr. Uh, President. How are they doing? If I don't mind asking.
they're doing great. We have no problems. No problems whatsoever. In fact, I have no idea who my parents even are. That's great to hear. Your son must be very proud. Family is everything. My advice is to make sure that Frank has a solid relationship with you. He is your future after all. And, you know, he's going through the teenager period. It's difficult to connect with him. He's a little shy. Wish that was my son's biggest problem. Darren seems to be doing fine. I saw his yacht... I saw that his yacht party in Benfi made local news. Well, the rascal didn't even ask permission to use the yacht and took it. He basically stole it. Kids, they're always taking their yachts. You know what I mean? The good news is that I finally convinced him to go to university. You'll study economics in Latvian business school. That's a good choice. I'm going to agree in Sorland separates you from the rabble. And we especially need more people who understand economics. Maybe your son will be a great future economist. I couldn't count on that. <laughs> Fucking got him. But I agree that we need more economists to enter politics. It's unfortunate that Albert Alfonso was the only leader who actually studied economics. He turned to me. Not that I mean anything against you, Mr. Rain. Uh... You know what? He was an inspiration to all reformists. I, I want to try to keep things, like, not hostile. <laughs> he was. He truly wanted to transform this country into a modern nation. His term was very difficult. He got destroyed. A correction! It wasn't his policy that destroyed him, it was the old guard. What do you mean? He threatened our, their economic power base with the country through their vast privatization plan. They removed him and backed you after. Walter stopped the conspiracy theories. I think we've had enough drinks. Everyone went quiet. After a long silence, followed by some chit-chat, Walter ordered a bottle of whiskey. It's one good-looking bottle. The waiters brought one of the finest Rakesian whiskeys. It was time for a toast. A toast. I stood up to give a toast. Um, to a constructive and beneficial future, may our differences be set aside for a good future. They say hope dies last to the future. Raised. I think it's time we call it a night. Ida stood up. Most of us were already a little tipsy at this point. I want to thank you, Mr. President, for joining us, and you, Simon, for putting this all together. Thank you all for being here. It was great. Thank you, and thanks for being here. After bidding our farewells, we slowly walked out of the restaurant. The moon was shining bright as everyone except Walter left her in luxury cars. President, a moment alone, please. God, God, Walter. You know, I'll, I'll follow him. Hopefully I don't get, like, like stabbed. Usually the little scene spokesman doesn't directly comment on the administration, but I'd like to say a few things about this special evening. Fine, I'll, I'll listen. Finally, President listens to the people. It won't be easy to pass a new constitution through the amendment in the Supreme Court. We could help you get it through, though, if you return, if you help us with a few economic requests. Walter lifted up his cigar and took a few drags for continuing. When your group are disappointed in the economic direction that you took, promoting an inefficient planned economy. We don't share similar interests in Lilsburg. Yeah, we live in the same country, don't we? Let us settle our differences. He looks me in the eye. You rejected our previous discre uh, discreet offer to pick under hall construction with the, execu uh, with the execution of the first mega infrastructure project. This action led to disappointment in the group. We are aware of the upcoming tax meeting and would like to take a step in the right direction if privatization corporates could get a tax cut. To boost the economy with job creation, of course. And the positive side effect will be our support administration through the entire term. I'll make them objectively. I can't promise you anything. Oh, let's not be ha hasty, hasty here. The recession will end if Lodeberg is on your side, Mr. President. Why can't we all be friends? I'll, I'll see what I can do. Excellent. Glad to hear this. The group wants a private corporate tax cut and privatization of healthcare and education. You know, I'm going to reject that. If that's a shame, I did offer you a preach for answers and over an awkward silence. Either way, President, we are here and always ready to work with you. If you change your mind, don't forget that. I'll think about it, but not now. Walter and Sergey came up to pick me up, entered the car, and we drove to a residence of Lackfee and Sergey took the seaside route. He keeps trying to, like, buy my honesty, and I, I don't think it's... I guess it's not... Come on now. But, I mean, here's the thing. Like, there's not enough time in this episode for me to read an entire new description or new dialogue. So, we've got prisoners' riots. Uh, we've got industrial concerns. What are you guys worried about? A mine disaster. Coal mines collapsed in Warbell. Emergency response teams were dispatched immediately due to the sheer size of disaster. Additional manpower and supplies were requested for nearby cities. Current death toll is 82 and counting. Do we have any news? Bill of Rights on workers being drafted. Um, president meets with business council. 112 dead? <laughs> this news is outdated. 
But I think it's going to be a good time then for us to end this episode here. So thank you everybody for watching my second swim. If you enjoyed, put a thumbs up. Not enjoy, throw some down. You want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.